again, the theme is going to be oxidizing agents which will and reducing agents, which will let us uh, predict redox reagent redox reactions, whether they happen spontaneously or whether we have to put uh, energy or work in. Uh, so we have a bit of a recap of what from lesson one. I have a, a net ionic uh, reaction, which is a happens to be a net redox reaction between zinc uh, and copper. I've broken it up into the two pieces again. This is the same example we had from uh, the very beginning. Okay. We have our oxidation, which has the loss of electrons. Okay. Oxidation, electrons are always on the product side. Our reduction, the gaining, the GER, uh, they're always a reactant. Okay. And then we're going to dive into this statement. Half reactions are tabulated not by what happens to the reagent. Okay. Now what happens is going to be either going to lose or it's going to gain. Okay. Leo and Ger oxidation reduction. So they're not tabulated uh, originally by the Leo and the Ger. They were tabulated by what a chemical does to the other reaction. Okay. And this is going back hundreds of years ago. Okay, they kind of know what oxygen gas always did to things. And oxygen gas always oxidized things. And that was the leading of sort of building some of this redox knowledge up. Okay, so we're going to dive into what does zinc do to the other chemical? And what does copper 2 plus do to the other reactant? That's going to be our perspective. So first we're going to look at our zinc. What does the zinc do to the other species, okay, which is the copper, okay, specifically the copper 2 plus. Okay. It's a unit important for both me and you to be very clear when you give an answer, uh, copper, copper ion, copper 2 plus ion. Okay. So if we think of our zinc, you know, uh, what does it end up doing to that copper? Okay. Well, if it wasn't for the zinc, the copper could not get reduced. Okay. So what the copper, what the sorry, what the zinc does is get oxidized by losing two electrons. Those two electrons get pushed to the copper and allow it to be uh, reduced. Okay. Without the zinc pushing electrons to copper. Uh, copper wouldn't get reduced. Uh, so zinc, even though it gets oxidized, it's, it's tabulated, or we think of it as a reducing agent. Zinc causes the other chemical to get reduced. Okay. Now we can do the same thing with our other reactant. Okay. Our other reactant is, is, sorry, is uh, copper 2 plus. It gets reduced. But what it does to the other chemical, which is zinc, is cause it to be oxidized. It ends up helping pull electrons from it. So even though copper itself is reduced, it is referred to as an agent of oxidation or an oxidizing agent. The reducing agents, I'll use RA all the time in my notes, and I'll even take it on quizzes and tests from you, and oxidizing agents, OA. Okay. So RAs are oxidized, okay. actually undergoes oxidation, okay, but they cause reduction in the other chemicals. Oxidizing agents get reduced themselves, but they, uh, but they cause that oxidation in the other chemical. So it's kind of an, an opposite. You've got oxidation reduction, and then that chemical that gets oxidized is the opposite agent. Okay. Uh, we definitely need to practice this, and it's going to be a few lessons before you're really comfortable with doing the four keywords, oxidation reduction, oxidizing agents, reducing agents. A few things to wrap up. We've been talking about electron transfer a lot. It's important to realize that I'm only talking about valence electrons. These are, these are the outermost electrons in an atom. We're not moving around core or inner electrons. We're, we're removing ones uh, near the very outside. Okay. And we've got some patterns in terms of the transfer. 
electrons are always transferred from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. Okay. So we always see them going from whatever is the reducing agent. Okay. The reducing agent is actually going to be what's oxidized, so the reducing agent is going to lose electrons to the OA, which is what is getting reduced and what's gaining electrons. But realizing it's always RA to OA is quite useful, or you can deduce it. Uh, so let's do a little bit more labeling of OAs and RAs, and then we'll move into the predicting part, which is the heading of this lesson. Um, so this was an earlier question uh, from the book, uh, but we're just going to look at uh, the oxidation and reduction part of this question, or I'm going to add to it. Uh, so the first one, you don't have to go back to your book or look that page up. Uh, 6A has lead reacting with copper 2 plus ion, creating lead 2 plus and copper plus. So let's see if I can find, uh, figure out those half reactions. So we've got lead, which is neutral, becoming lead 2 plus. We're going zero to positive. Okay. Now, in order to do that, in terms of electrons, uh, there's two numbers in the difference. To go zero to plus two, we have to lose two electrons. Okay. When you lose electrons, the charge goes up because you're losing something negative. So losing electrons oxidized. So we just found our oxidation. Lead solid becoming lead 2 plus, and it's an oxidation, so I know to put the electrons on the product side. I didn't really think about it that much, I just know it's oxidation, but it matches with losing electrons. Our copper is going plus 2 to 0. Okay. This is where it's really handy to write the 0 in. Okay. So the charge is going down now. Okay. In order to go down, you have to be gaining electrons. So plus two electrons with the copper. That's our GER, gaining electrons reduced. Okay. Going from two plus, gaining one electron to one plus, and a second electron to neutral. GER always has electrons on the reactant side. So there's our half reactions, list the OAs and the RAs, so we kind of have to keep this opposite thing in mind. Now the agents are also just the reactants, so OA, RA, so our oxidizing agent is the chemical that actually is going to get reduced, and that's going to be there's our reduction half reaction, so that's our copper 2 plus is our oxidizing agent. Okay. What gets reduced causes the, um, causes the oxidation in the other chemical. Our reducing agent, that had to be the reactant that, undergone, that underwent oxidation, so that's going to be our lead. Solid. Okay. Okay. Now, I, keep, I mentioned this opposite. You do have to keep in mind that a reduction is a whole equation where a reducing agent is just the chemical that underwent oxidation. Okay. So I'm not writing whole half reactions for OAs and RAs. I'm just writing the reactant, the agent. Now, one thing that's going to help you is to relate OAs and RAs to the table. So the way our table is built uh, is by listing, uh, it's a reduction half reaction table, 
Uh, so that means all those reductions in terms of agents, uh, the reducing reduction half reactions would have all the OAs as reactants. And the table has what wants to get reduced most easily at the top or the best OA is at the top. And it works all the way down to the worst uh, reducing agent. So to the worst oxidizing agents. We have all these reductions, all these oxidizing agents, and they're from the best to the strongest. Okay? Now you don't have to put this part in your notes, but you'll see these voltages on the side. We're not going to use the voltages in the table till we get to the next unit. Okay? And, uh, and we'll talk about that later. Okay. So let's sort of look at the table and actually make a bit more sense out of this slide. The notion that these half reactions, which are have oxidizing agents at the beginning, are from strongest to weakest. So this is your data booklet, uh, page seven. Now, one thing that all ND chem teachers let students do, you shouldn't be putting things in your data booklet, but we're fine if you write what I'm about to write on your booklet. We will not complain when you have it with you uh, on unit tests. Obviously, if you choose to write your diploma, you, you get a new booklet and this wouldn't be there. Okay? So these are our re reductions, uh, half reactions. Okay? All those reactants for those half reactions are OA. So all of these reactants are oxidizing agents and they're listed from what wants to be reduced the most or the best OA at the top. So fluorine gas is the best oxidizing agent. The strongest OA is at the very top. And as you go down, they get weaker and weaker and weaker. The worst oxidizing agent is lithium plus. Lithium plus does not want to act as an oxidizing agent. Okay? There is nothing worse in the table and not much worse uh, in existence. Okay? So strongest OA at the top, weakest OA at the bottom, and this is just referring to the first column. Okay? Now if the first column is all oxidizing agents, what we see in the second column is all reducing agents. And we see the opposite trend where the strongest OA is at the top, fluorine. Uh, the worst or weakest reducing agent is fluoride, F minus. Okay. The strongest uh, reducing agent is at the very bottom, lithium metal. Uh, one of the reasons lithium is used in lithium ion batteries, okay? When you turn the lithium ion and you charge it to lithium metal, you have a very strong reducing agent, okay? It also is a very small atom uh, and a very light atom, which is useful in making lighter batteries. Okay? So there's many reasons to use lithium. Uh, one of them is the fact that the lithium metal is such a good uh, reducing agent. So strongest at the bottom, and as you go up, so this should kind of feel a little bit like the acid-base table. We had a very similar feel. We had acids in one column, bases in the other, strongest at the top of the first column, strongest at the bottom of the other. The same type of pattern. We just now, we don't have OA, we don't have acids and bases. We have oxidizing agents, strongest at the top, and strongest reducing agents at the bottom. Okay. And we're just about ready to dive into the predicting part of using this table. Okay. Uh, the order, the sequencing of the OA and the RA lets us know uh, whether the reaction is going to occur or not. Okay. So predicting if a redox reaction will occur. Okay. Uh, again, we had the same type of pattern in the electrochemistry, whether the acid was above the base or not. But the outcome is different. Um, you have to keep clear it's not a great more or less than 50%. Okay? If the oxidizing agent in the first column is above the reducing agent, so I'm putting the RA below. Okay? I'm putting it below and to the right because it's in the, the right-hand column. Okay? If the 
best OA is above the best RA, then the reaction is spontaneous. It does occur. Okay? We have to let go of the greater than 50%. If we have the other sequence, if the strongest oxidizing agent is below the strongest reducing agent, so the OA is kind of down, which makes it weak, and the RA is kind of up high, which makes it weak, okay? there will be no reaction. Okay? Those two chemicals will just sit next to each other and nothing will ever happen. It's not slow, it's just impossible. Okay? Uh, to give an example of this, uh, would be uh, if you have gold and you put gold into acid. Okay. I'm going to flip back to the table and find uh, both of these. So we've got gold and H plus. Okay. Hopefully, you have your table from page seven with you. There is gold. It's a reducing agent. It's in the, the right-hand column. H plus by itself. It shows up in pairings a lot of places, but by itself, in the it's in the first column and it's in the middle. Okay. Gold as a RA is above the OA. Okay. This situation will cause no reaction. The reason you buy people gold is not because it's beautiful. The only reason to buy somebody gold is, to, is it's because it's a really bad reducing agent. Okay? Maybe that takes some of the, uh, the, the uh, love affair out of giving gold to someone. It's pure chemistry why it's valuable. Okay? Gold is one of the most expensive metals because of how bad a reducing agent it is. Okay. If you scan the table for other really bad reducing agents, you'll find other metals that are quite valuable. So we have gold as a bad reducing agent. You will find silver is also a fairly poor reducing agent, which also uh, makes it uh, the second or one of the, the most uh, valuable metals. Gold being something like $1,800 an ounce and silver being $20 to $50 an ounce. Okay? You keep working your way down the table and you'll find metals are worth a couple of dollars a pound, not even an ounce. Okay? So the value of gold, the value of silver is their uh, position in this redox table. Okay? The fact they're above H plus means they don't react with, with acid.